Hey everyone, really excited to be bringing you guys a hero PVZ build order. This one's gonna be his tricky three gas blink stalker attack that you might've seen him do multiple times in GMAC Valencia. Let's go ahead and get into the build order. Go ahead and set a probe out to your opponent's natural to basically guarantee the block on the hatch and then also send a probe to the low ground to of course get your own wall up. And 14 pylon. Again, if I'm not saying something, kind of just assume that you are building probes continuously. Chrono the Nexus, when the pylon is done, continue building those probes. Send a probe to the gnats. Make sure you get your gateway down and the giddy splits. That's a 16 gateway. And hopefully the hatch block was successful, by the way. A 17 gas back at home. If the hatch block was successful, make sure to check the main base for an early pool. Assuming there is no early pool, we can continue on with the normal build order. Fill up your assimilator. send a probe down to the natural to get a 20 nexus. Don't build a probe, because you're only gonna get a 20 7x core right now. And then back to building probes. 21 gas. And a 22 pylon. Fill up the second assimilator. Build an adept and chrono it, and then build a stargate. Start warp gates research. Right now, Hero is also pylon blocking an attempted third base. You can, or you don't have to. Another adept. There's a chrono on the natural nexus as well. First Adept should be scouting the opponent, making sure they're not building a bunch of links. Start up an Oracle and Chrono that. And get a gateway now, probably, to complete your wall off. And a pylon. Second Oracle and Chrono that as well. Send an Adept to the third base and a Probe, preparing for your third. Oracle can stay at the third as well in case you think they're going to be aggressive. And hopefully they're not, so you can go ahead and get that 345 third Nexus and a Pylon to go with it. Twilight Council and a third gas. Gateway. Oracles should be scouting the opponent once again. Pylon. Fill up that third gas geyser. Get two adepts and two gateways. Actually, add another gateway as well. And don't forget to start a blink on that Twilight Council and chrono it. 
Another gateway. Warp in two stalkers. The shield battery at the third. Chrono blink once more. Stalker warp in. Another two stalkers. Also stop building probes. And send a probe out on the map. Hopefully it is sneaky. Get a couple of more probes. But prepare your move outs. Warp in three more stalkers. As many as you can. And then set up a proxy pylon close to the zerg. But not actually in sight. And then build stalkers continuously. Clear creep with the oracles. Hopefully both are still alive. Uh, place an advanced pylon down as well. And engage if the Zerg is unprepared. Now, if there's 550 lings, I mean, maybe don't do it, but <laughs> yes. This should be a surprise attack, so they should be a little underprepared. And again, warp in as many stalkers as possible, all while not building probes. So you've stayed very low in the probe count back on the third base. And that's kind of it for the main portion of the build. We see Hero continuing to aggress while also trying to protect one of the proxy pylons, using the Adepts to try and uh, cause a distraction, get more drone kills. If the attack doesn't win straight off the bat, do get kind of the normal macro things, which are going to be Charge, which you can get immediately, really, uh, Robo, and then your Gasses. So you're going to get the 4th, 5th, and 6th gases a lot of the time. Well, really depending on what you want to follow up with. I think in this game, Hero does try to follow up with a kind of a fast, like, gateway charge type of game. Anywho, moving on to the build discussion. They do have the strengths. So, first of all, it is kind of cheesy. Although, maybe a bit too late to be called a cheese. But, you know, it's pretty... It kind of depends on being unscouted. So it can insta-win if the Zerg is a bit greedy. We have certainly seen that in professional games. Might not seem like a lot, you know, a, I mean, not even a dozen unupgraded Blink Stalkers, but it really is supposed to be hitting a Zerg who is expecting someone to be pushing a little bit later at the very least, if not really pushing till mu very much later, right? So if the Zerg is preparing their own three base attack, you're not gonna have a good time. <laughs> but if they are trying to set up for a typical Zerg, which is like trying to build as few units as possible while being as greedy as possible, well, you might just win. The strength for this one is also a weakness, we'll get into it later, but it's high skill cap, so the better you are at reading a PVZ and the better you are at Blink Stalker Micro, both the individual kind of reflexive micro of a Blink Stalker, but then also just the, you know, reading of the situation, reading of the battle, the better you're going to be able to perform with this. So that's uh, is kind of a goal for some people. Perhaps intimidation for others. This plays on the expected meta. So right now, as of uh, August 2022, hopefully for a few more more months at the very least, you know, Blink Stalkers are going to be in meta, and I mean the maps are probably going to be the same as well. So maybe in a few more months this is going to be out of date. But right now it kind of plays on the expectation, which yes includes a bit later of a push and not as dedicated. Sometimes even leading into a faster fourth base actually, which Hero would also display in the same series, just a different map. So he has kind of the different Blink Stalker openers off the Oracle openers, either two or three Oracles. And then it's up to the Zerg to kind of figure out exactly which one it is. And the current map pool has less perfect pillars. I think Pig might have coined that one, but it's actually excellent use. So pervert pillars, the overlord pillars that can go literally right over your natural, that see especially your front building. So the semi score the gateway, maybe the stargate or second gateway, whatever. But then they also can sometimes easily see the natural gases, either by moving just a smidge or not moving at all, actually, which means that faking gases is a lot more difficult on previous map pools. In this map pool, you have less pervert pillars and just generally more options of hiding a gas. You might still, on some maps, have to get a gas to truly hide that you're not getting it. And by that, I mean get the fourth assimilator at the natural, but then don't fill it with probes, right? Um, but you can see in this 
game, actually, despite technically an Overlord being allowed to be on the left side of those gases, could have theoretically gone into Scout. Uh, Scarlet, that was Hero's opponent, didn't actually set one up there, so... We also have seen Hero add on a Stalker after the first Adept, try and kind of combat that as well. But, uh, yeah, if there's going to be an Overlord very close to the natural gases, maybe it's not going to be as effective as a fake as you're hoping. If not, then it's going to be very effective, uh, hopefully. And moving on to the weaknesses, this is still better on some maps than others. So this map, actually, that we saw there, leaving inside and outright, it, it's actually the map that Hero had chosen to do that build on twice against the same opponent as well. So there's something really good about it. And I think that is a combination of the rush distance, order of expansions, and then the ability to push the pylon in proxy close to the zerg but still across a bridge across a choke right so it's hard for the zerg to even pounce on the situation if they figure it out because they have to go through a choke or if they have to wrap around like we saw scarlet eventually do um and then the reinforcements uh if you are in control of the game come still pretty quickly and again can retreat through the bridge. So I think that's why that map in particular works very well for it, but uh, you can see other maps work okay. Some maps probably just aren't going to work that well. The way that the order, uh, the expansions actually come out, maybe they come out a little more horizontal than they do vertical, so trying to hit like a really important part of the Zerg can be more difficult than others. Maybe the retreat path isn't as abusive, so on and so forth. Just keep that in mind and you know, make sure to really think about where you're placing the proxy pylon and how you're using your units. It is very difficult to make work if the Zerg scouts and prepares an army. So again, if they see that there's no fourth gas, that's already going to be a little sus. If you're facing a, a smart Zerg, they're going to be on edge. Maybe you face a Zerg who gets a Ling in as you're building a stock account on a lower pro production, and they're also kind of like, oh, is this going to lead into something? And then just, you know, maybe you're facing a Zerg player who's going to be aggressive themselves. And you're not going to have a very good time unless you're really, really good. <laughs> you know, Blink, Stalker, Micro, getting preparation back at home, so on and so forth. So... This is, like I said, it's kind of a cheese, you know, it kind of depends on being unscouted and uh, having an underwhelming Zerg defense to, to really make work. So, yeah. Uh, must keep the proxy pylon alive. I, I believe Hero has played out the same build order where his proxy pylons were killed and he still successfully managed to warp in back at home. At his third base, most likely, to reinforce. Especially on some maps, like the map we saw there, since your third kind of pushes towards your opponent, it maybe isn't the farthest away for the rush distance, but it's, it's obviously unideal. And this is going to be very momentum-based. So keep the proxy pylon alive. There's a reason to have two of them, as we saw Hero do. Maybe even think critically on how much surface area you're giving to the Zerg player. Maybe put it up against a pillar or something like that, just because it is really important. So also keep that in mind if you start to be really aggressive and you start to get too far away from the proxy pylon. You might want to warp in protectively or even pull back for a hot second, wondering if their army is coming around for the, the snipe. This is difficult to execute, so high skill cap is a strength, also a bit of a weakness. This isn't going to be so much an A move, even if the Zerg is underprepared. If you're not good with the set of units, you're probably going to make mistakes that the Zerg player is then going to capitalize on, barely squeak out enough roaches, and you're going to say, what the hell, I thought this was going to be an easy win. It's actually not. Out of all the cheeses, I think that you could have looked up all lanes, whatever you want to call it, this might still be more of the one of the difficult ones, <laughs> but, you know, if, if it is just, like, four roaches and, and 16 lings, well, then you, you probably can aim move your way to victory anyways, but otherwise, it is a bit more difficult, and there is no easy follow-up. Another reason why it is difficult to execute is that there's no, like, fallback plan, so, oh, well, I'm, I have a, two robos in robotics bay anyways, you know, oh, I guess the disruptors. No, that's not gonna happen. You can go into charge lots, but then a Zerg player is gonna be pretty good against that. If they go mass roach, ravager, they have banelings, both are going to do okay. And then you have like shield batteries, uh, but you don't even have cannons, you don't have a forge. So following up can be very, you have to be a very savvy player, basically, which, which Hero is, so he has done it, but you all out there might have some difficulty. Play like Hero only gets you so far, you know, when you actually aren't Hero. Some tips and tricks to at least try to be like Hero. Uh, copy Hero's pylon block in this vid for maximum annoyance. So what happened, if you guys weren't paying very close attention to the vid or you haven't downloaded the replay, is that his 
guaranteed, basically, pro block on that natural. Made Scarlet get the third base. Makes a lot of sense. Most Zergs would. And then Hero added in the Adept pressure, and he made sure to actually use it to harass. Not just like, oh, I checked. I did my due diligence. I'm going to go back home. He actually got into the main base and killed a couple of drones and then got back home anyways. So just massively used an Adept. And then he got two more Adepts when maybe he didn't have to. Maybe he could have started building Stalkers faster. Two more Stalkers or two more Adepts. So then those Adepts went along with, I think, the still surviving third one and tried to get that distraction in the main base. So that's just, that's going to be the capitalizing on, on a Zerg gritting their teeth against you, maybe already being a little off tilt when the main attack actually comes in. Think how likely it is that an Overlord will scout your natural gases. So I did go over this already with the strengths and weaknesses, but just to reiterate, there are some maps where it's going to be more likely an Overlord's going to see it easily, and other maps where they're, they're, they aren't as likely to see it. Now, if they get an Overlord speed build, or they're just, you know, they're going to suicide two Overlords anyways, that's, that's pretty much going to guarantee the gases are scouted. But I will say, unless you're facing, uh, you know, relatively savvy Zerg player, they might not even really be looking for that. Let's be real. A lot of players out there on ladder are probably going to be looking for the obvious things, a bunch of gateways couple of stargates dark shrine right and if they don't see it they might not really understand what's on the way so there is that but uh yeah the more you can think about how likely it is i think the better you can prepare for the attack so if you think it's been completely scouted and you're just like this isn't gonna work maybe you don't even put a proxy pylon down maybe you actually just change your mind maybe you actually just go into a forge a robo get the immortal it'd be a very sloppy follow-up to be clear it wouldn't be ideal but Something to think about. Uh, and also think about the best avenue of attack before placing a proxy pylon. Again, kind of going over it, but really think about how that map in the video worked out for Hero, how he's able to abuse that. And then think about it when you go on to other maps, you know, like Moon Dance or something. Where is the pylon going to be A, maybe relatively safe or at least unscouted? And then actually make that B, because A really should be. A should be, how will this direct my line of attack? So if the pylon's in the middle of nowhere, what does that really do, right? If the pylon is on, I don't know, the, the it's like a, there's a triangle base set up from the Zerg and it's on the very like right side of it, maybe it's not as good because there's like a choke on that side where the left side would have had more of a concave opportunity for use. Like those types of things should be first and foremost for that proxy pylon. It is kind of the tip of the spear almost with a push like this. I don't usually say a structure is, but in this, in this case, it kind of is. So that is actually really important to think about. And then, yeah, B, making sure that it's you know relatively safe. It should be somewhat safeguarded by your push in a weird way, but you can also think about how likely it is to be backstabbed, right? Or how likely it is to be uh, totally surrounded, so on and so forth. Use oracles to clean up creep, but also stasis traps and pulsar beams can be helpful. So oracle in this game, again, was used mostly to clear up creep. It lost its uh, sister, unfortunately, which probably would have been used for a stasis trap or pulsar beam. But yeah, that is maybe the first thing you can think of, giving the Zerg less mobility for probably the second wave. Might might actually make the second wave work. For the first wave, it might not impact it because creep receives fairly fast, but you're also going pretty fast. You're trying to get the momentum going. But if the creep is cleared up and the second wave of stalkers comes in, that little extra movement can be a big deal and even less scouting, all right? But do not forgo stasis traps and pulsar beams just because you're not thinking of them, basically. Stasis traps can be incredibly effective. Put them behind your army. Put them in front of your army. Can sometimes be okay, too. Put them around the proxy pylon, right? So that if they do try and go for the pylon or just plain old your reinforcements trying to get this around on them, they'll be blocked out. And then pulsar beams, the actual oracle attack, can be extremely helpful. I think people already got the gist that that is a crucial part of the general Blink Stalker gateway plan of action from a hero esque style of play. Oracles. Oracles are really important there. So when you're losing games because your stalkers are retreating, but they're still getting nipped at, and you're like, ah, oh, God, I wish I could have something else. Remember your oracles. Your oracles can cover your stalkers even to a point where maybe that saves you a blink. Instead of having to blink the stalkers, you just run them and the oracles pulsar beam and the Zerg either sacrifices lings to get those stalkers or they just simply run away. 
they also have to respect it. So that also adds in other elements of their defense, which is making sure that the queens are actually on the front line, which oftentimes they are not first and foremost, right? Because they're, they're reacting to something. They're like, oh shit, like I got to get on the, <laughs> on the ball here. So the pulsar beams can be incredibly helpful. So just don't uh, underplay the oracles, even though we only got two of them. And they might even seem like a, a bit of a fake, like the whole goal is getting to the stalkers. Now the oracles are still very, very useful. And perhaps one of the reasons that this particular map gave Hero so much trouble is because he lost the second oracle. Where previous iterations of the same build on the same map, actually, uh, he kept both of them alive and he won. Coincidence? Maybe. <laughs> but the point is, Oracle's good. So that is it for the tips and tricks. That is it for the build order, guys. Hopefully, again, this gives you uh, maybe a couple of easy wins. At the very least, it gives you a fun new opening to work off of. Because we are all not hero, I'm assuming. We're not professionals. And if this just opens up a more aggressive stance for you, that kind of sets the Zerg off guard, then a macro game might be very possible out of this and one of the more fun macro games you're going to have too so i'll go with the cheesy line and say that it's most important to have fun but let's be real you also want mmr so hopefully this gives it to you like subscribe comment all that good stuff and i'll see you later for more build order tutorials